Bibles this morning, we'd ask you to turn to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Again, I know it seems like we've been in Matthew for the last several messages, but uh, that's where he's brought us to again today. But if you found your place, Matthew chapter 16, and we want to start reading at verse 21. Matthew chapter 16, starting at verse 21. It says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. And we'd ask you if you would to bow your heads. Father, again, we thank you for another day you've given. We thank you for all the blessings of this day. And Father, we thank you for your precious word. And Lord, once again, just uh, put the words in my mouth that need said. Take Doug out of the way, and Lord, if there be a need or burden, if there be one that don't know you this morning, Father, we'd ask that you'd speak to them, Lord. Father, again, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask all these things in Christ's name, and amen. amen. Why there must be an Easter. Why there must be be an Easter. You notice he said, from that time Jesus began to show the disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So Mike, it didn't say that uh, again he was probably going to do this. It said that he told him, I must go. I must go. I must suffer and be raised again. Okay. But folks, why there must be an Easter. Listen, there are probably dozens of holidays that you all could care less about. Okay? Uh, I know everybody probably just jumps for joy that it's St. Patrick's Day. If you're not Irish, Rick, who cares? I get it. <laughs> Valentine's Day, if you're not a woman, I get it. Who cares? Okay? <laughs> Men, you're going to care, but okay. But a lot of these holidays we could just do without Sandy. And there's even some of them, Harley, that Columbus Day, they're, they're trying to get rid of Columbus Day because there are people that are so offended of something that supposedly happened 500 years ago or whatever. Listen, folks, I get it. It happened 500 years ago, okay? It's 2023. Grow a little bit of a spine, okay? I can't control what happened then. If you had the same con condemnation and the same agitation about what they did to Christ, but there isn't, okay? But folks, listen, there, there are all days that we could just care less about. But there has to be an Easter. There has to be an Easter. And the reason there has to be an Easter, and we kind of went over this this morning in Sunday school, is that, folks, sin demands an offering. Sin demands an offering, okay? Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, around verse 22, says, Without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Folks, listen. Without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. In the Old Testament, it was either through a bull or a goat or a turtle dove. Okay, there was a blood offering. There had to be a blood offering for sin. Folks, even today there has to be a blood offering, but here's the good thing, it's done been done once for everyone for all time, okay? 
In that same ninth chapter of Hebrews, around verse 28, it says, For Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, and shall appear again to those that love him the second time with salvation. Folks, listen. He, he offered himself once to bear the sins of many. There's no more repeatedly, Joe, killing the bulls, killing the goats, killing all these animals, going to the priest. And they, You want to offer an offering? It's been offered. Right there. The blood of Christ. Okay. And all you have to offer is repentance. Lord, forgive me. He's done did all the hard work, Charlie. We don't have to. He's paid the price. He's paid the penalty. And again, folks, listen. Sin has a penalty. Romans 3.23, for, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So again, something had to be offered because you can't make yourself righteous. You can't make yourself clean. But Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Folks, there has to be an Easter because there has to be an offering for sin. And Christ is that offering for sin. He said, listen, I've got to go to Jerusalem and then I'm going to be killed. Now, wait a minute. This don't sound like good news. You're talking about death. Folks, there has to be death before there can be life. There has to be death before there can be life. John 12, 24, somewhere around there. Christ talking. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it shall abide alone. But if it die, it shall bring forth much fruit. Okay? Folks, listen. Those of you that have planted the garden over the years... You should understand this, okay? You put a, a, a dead piece of seed in the ground, and what happens? A little bit of water, a little bit of light, a little bit of the Lord, and it becomes a plant. It begins to bring forth fruit. Folks, listen. He had to die to bring forth life. Until Christ died, you were dead, okay? You were dead men walking until Christ died and rose again. Just like the, those dead seeds go into the ground and bring forth life, Mike, that's what Christ had to do. He had to die, go into the tomb, and come out again so that we could have life. But that's what, there, there must be an Easter. There's, there's no choice about it. He had to go. He had to suffer. He had to die. Okay. And listen, this was confirmed, not by Doug, not by CNN or NBC or uh, Fox News, okay? This was confirmed by Moses and Elijah, okay? You go to Luke chapter 9, it said that he took Peter and James and John with him up on the mount and that he was transfigured before him and that there appeared two men talking with him, which were Moses and Elias or Elijah. Okay. And it said that they appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which should be accomplished at Jerusalem. Folks, listen, Moses and Elijah wasn't there because they didn't have anything better to do. They were there talking about what Christ was going to have happen. And folks, listen, Christ is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. In Moses, you had the law represented. In Elijah, you had the prophets represented. Folks, everything in the Old Testament points to Christ. Points to the cross. Listen, we spend all our time looking back at the cross. In the Old Testament, everything is looking forward to the cross. Moses told him, said, listen, there will arise one out of your midst like me, talking about Christ. But the... And some people will say, well, they turned over their authority. Listen, Christ has always had his authority. He didn't need to have anybody turn that authority over, Joe. But he's the fulfillment. He's the fulfillment of the law. He's the fulfillment of the prophets. And they spoke to him there and said, listen, this is what's going to happen. 
Now Moses and Elijah could realize that, but Peter and the rest of the disciples couldn't. Lord, listen, don't say things like that. We don't want anything bad to happen to you. Folks, Easter has to happen or you'll die lost. Easter has to happen or you'll die lost. Listen, we need to celebrate Easter, okay? Well, Doug, now what about Christmas? I love Christmas. I, I do. But folks, listen. <coughs> you can forget about Christmas, and Rick, there's not much consequences, okay? You're forgetting someone's birthday, okay? Listen, folks, you all forget somebody's birthday all the time, okay? November 18th. As good friends as Cheryl is with me, listen, I'm third place on the totem pole on November 18th. Her dad Johnny's birthday is November 18th. And me and him both fall to somebody else, Lisa. You know who? Mickey Mouse's birthday is on November 18th. Everybody knows Mickey Mouse. There ain't too many people that know Johnny Jackson or Doug McClellan. Listen, folks, the, uh, people's birthdays, there's very few birthdays that you remember. Those that are closest to you, your dearest family, your dearest friends, and other than that, unless you have it wrote down somewhere, you're probably going to forget it. And, and folks, listen, as much as we, we celebrate his birth, if we don't celebrate his death and his resurrection, there's no point. There's no point. Now, they all have to have happened, don't get me wrong, but folks, listen, his death must have happened. The resurrection must have happened, okay? And the, the, the resurrection, his death and resurrection is a fulfillment of Scripture. His death and resurrection is a fulfillment of Scripture. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3, Paul writes and says, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And then he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Listen, folks, this wasn't just by chance. Folks, do you realize how many scriptures are fulfilled in Christ? Harley, it's, it's impossible. They, they've calculated the odds, and it's numerically impossible for all of the prophecies relating to Christ, Sandy, that were fulfilled, okay? You maybe could predict one of them. You might lucky and get two. There's like 200 prophecies concerning Christ, and they're all fulfilled, Jessica. Guess what? It's not an accident. Just like we said in Sunday school, folks, there's a plan of salvation, and God has worked out the plan. All you've got to do is accept it. All you have to do is accept it. But it was, full. Easter is fulfilled in Scripture, okay? Isaiah chapter 53. You go back and you read the whole chapter of Isaiah 53 this week. Folks, that whole chapter is nothing but a description of the crucifixion of Christ, okay? It said that he was a man of sorrows, that he bore our grief, Okay? Uh, that his, his face was marred, okay, as it had never been marred. Said uh, he was, um, help us, Lord. Thank you. He was wounded for our transgressions and bru wounded for our iniquities and bruised for our transgressions. And uh, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, for by his stripes we are healed. Folks, again, all of this speaks nothing but what happened concerning the crucifixion of Christ. It said that he was numbered with the transgressors. What did it say? That he was crucified between two thieves, between two malefactors. It said that like a, a lamb to the slaughter as the sheep, he opened not his mouth. You remember when they brought him before Pilate and said, well, what do you got to say? And he said, nothing. What else was there to say, Harley? He had done said everything. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But they couldn't accept that. Glenda, they couldn't accept it then. They can't accept it now. 
Well, listen, what, what's the catch? There is no catch. He's the way. You're either on the way or you're not. You either believe the way or you don't. You're either living in the way or you're not. But all of Isaiah 53 is just a preview of what happens at the cross. It said that he bare the sins of many. And Brother Steve brought this out this morning in the, the sunrise service. Listen, folks, it wasn't just the physical pain. It was the weight of your and my sin that he bore on the cross. It was the weight of your and my sin that he bore in the garden at Gethsemane. Folks, how would you like to be responsible for paying the cost of everyone else's wrong? We don't even want to pay the cost for our own wrong, Connie. Why would we want to pay the cost for someone else's wrong? But Mike, that's what he did. For our iniquities, for our transgressions, that's why he hung on the cross. But again, all this is fulfilled in Scripture, okay? Uh, Psalms 22, most of Psalms 22 is a prophetic uh, psalm of David, okay? Uh, the first verse in Psalms 22, it says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That sound familiar? I believe. Charlie may have read that this morning, did you, Charlie? I think. But that's what he said on the cross. said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You go down to about verse 7. I know he read this, okay? Said that they walked by and they, uh, they mocked him. And said, listen, he trusted in God to deliver him. Let him deliver him. What did they say when they walked by the cross? If thou be the Christ, then save thyself. If you're really the God, then come down and we'll believe. Folks, listen, if you don't believe by now, him coming off the cross wasn't going to help. Him coming off the cross wasn't going to help. Again, Luke 16, you know, the rich man, he begged Abraham, said, listen, send Lazarus back to talk to my family, to talk to my five brothers. He said, listen, they have the law and the prophets. They have Moses and the prophets. If they don't believe them, they won't believe one that come back from the dead. They said, oh, yeah, they will, yeah, they will. No. Folks, listen, they didn't believe one that come back from the dead then, and Sandy, they still don't believe that one come back from the dead. Folks, again, Easter isn't just this side of the, of the podium. It isn't just the cross. It's the empty tomb. Folks, again, we said this in Sunday school. Listen, the cross means, guess what? You believe in God. The tomb means, Luke, we believe God. <laughs> we believe that the tomb's empty. We believe that he rose again that third day. But again, all the, the, uh, these uh, scriptures, uh, Psalms 34, 20, said not one, uh, not one of his bones was broken. And you go to John 19 after they took him from the cross, okay? Not one of his bones was broken. <coughs> Everything that happens on Easter is a fulfillment of scripture. Psalm 16, 10, uh, Let's turn to that one. For thou will not leave my, thank you, for thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Folks, God didn't let him stay in the grave. The third day he rose again. He didn't let his holy one see corruption. Matthew 12 said that the, the Pharisees had come to him and said, Lord, give us a sign. He said, an evil, an evil adulterous generation seeketh a sign, and there shall no sign be given it except the sign of Jonas or Jonah. For as Jonah was in the, the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so also shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Folks, listen. The whole book of Jonah is a preview of of what happened to Christ. 
as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, guess what? Christ was in the, the heart of the earth three days and three nights. That third day, uh, the whale spits Jonah up. Okay, listen, the earth didn't spit Jonah up. Or the earth didn't spit Christ up. I'm sorry. Okay. And the, there are people that look and they'll say, well, the angels had to come and roll the, tomb, roll the stone away. Folks, listen, he was already gone. They didn't have to let him out, Harley. They had to let us in. They had to let Peter and John in. They had to let the others in to see that, you know what? The tomb's empty. Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here, but is risen. So, folks, all, all of these are a fulfillment of Scripture. And that's what Paul says. Listen, I've delivered to you the same thing that I received. Folks, listen, I'm delivering to you today the same thing that Doug received. If there was a different way to be saved, I would tell you. But there's not. <laughs> Again, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But by me. But there has to be an Easter. If there's not an Easter, then guess what? There's no victory. There's no victory. Okay? Uh, these kids that compete today in different things, uh, all right, y'all gonna get mad at this, but that's all right, you'll get over it. Okay? It's all participation trophies. It's all participation trophies, Harley, because we don't want anybody to feel bad because they lost. But guess what, folks? If Christ doesn't raise from the tomb, you lose. You lose, because guess what? Death still has a claim because no one's come from it. Holden read this uh, before Sunday school this morning in that same 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. It said that around verse 14, if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain and your faith is vain. Listen, folks, if Christ didn't raise from the tomb, what point is there for you to be here today? What point is there for you to be here any Sunday? Because if he's not risen, then you know what? Everything that we preach, Mike, is in vain. Everything that you all believe is in vain if he be not risen. In the 17th verse, he goes and kind of repeats the same thing. He says, if Christ be not risen from the dead, then is your faith in vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Folks, if Christ was the only thing that could wash away your sins, then guess what? If he isn't risen, the sins are still there. Okay? Because again, death still has a claim because no one's come back from the dead. Now, you'll look and you'll say, now, wait a minute, what about Lazarus? What about the, the widow's son? What about uh, Jairus' daughter, all these? They came back, and you know what happened? They died again, Charlie. They died again. But, folks, guess what? When Christ rose from the tomb, he rose to die nevermore. <laughs> folks, when you raise from the tomb, it's going to be to die nevermore. Okay? There are people that are born twice that will die once. There are people that are born once that will die twice. Okay. All right, Dr. Seuss, explain that. Okay. <laughs> Folks, that's what he told Nicodemus. You had to be born of both the water and of the spirit. Listen, you didn't have any choice when you come into this world. You didn't have any choice. And again, I know they can schedule now, Brittany, what day you want to have the baby and all this stuff. We can schedule, but God still's in control, okay? Uh, folks, you had no control over your first birth. You have all the control over your second birth. Well, what do you mean, Doug? Just like Nicodemus, you must be born again. Not to enter back into the, to the womb, but to be born of the Spirit. To be born in Christ. So you're born twice to die once. Okay. Brother Greg. My dad. Danny's dad. Bill's dad. All these that have passed on. 
They were born twice to die once. Ain't it? That, they've done died there one time. And we're all going to join them unless Christ comes back for his church first. Okay? But born twice to die once. But folks, if you're lost, guess what? You were born once and you're going to die twice. You're going to die a physical death. And then you're going to die an eternal spiritual death, separated from God, okay? Now, Doug, you're just trying to scare me. Revelation 20, go look at it, go read it. said he saw the, the dead, small and great, stand before the throne. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in according, or according to their works which were written in the books. Listen, Doug, I'm a good person. I have did this. I have did that. That's great. Guess what? It'll be wrote down. <laughs> but another book will be opened. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life would be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Folks, I ain't trying to scare you. I'm trying to educate you today. Listen, <laughs> You don't want to be born once to die twice, to die a physical death and then to die an eternal spiritual death, separated from God. Folks, if you're at that judgment, you're going to face eternal separation. And not because of all the bad things you've done. There are, there are going to be good moral people at that judgment, Sandy. Right. They were good to their neighbors. They were good to their kids. They were good employees. Again, they, they fed the hungry, they clothed the, the naked, they uh, did all these wonderful works, but they never accepted Christ. They believed in God, they didn't believe God. Folks, believing in God's good, <laughs> but if you don't believe God, you're lost. You're lost. That's why there has to be an Easter. That's why there has to be an Easter. There has to be victory over death. Because as long as everyone's still dead, death can claim that he's undefeated. But folks, after Christ, he couldn't make that claim anymore. Because guess what? There was one <laughs> that he died twice, never to die anymore. For you and for me. Folks, Jesus didn't come and go through all this stuff because he didn't have anything better to do. Now you all roll your eyes and say, well, preacher, duh. <laughs> Folks, do you realize what, what Christ gave up? To come down from heaven, to put on this physical body, to go through the pain and the suffering that he went through, to be rejected, to have people turn their backs on him, to have people that claim to be friends saying, and you know what? Just forsook him. But he did all that for you and I, if we'll only believe, if we'll only believe. And the end of that uh, 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians says, But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Peter was all upset, said, Lord, listen, don't talk about things like this, about you dying and, and stuff. That's why he's had to say, get thee behind me, Satan. You don't understand, Peter. You're savoring the things of the world and not the things of God. I have to go. If I don't go, you'll stay lost. If I don't die, you'll stay lost. If I don't raise again, you'll stay lost. Folks, listen. You can believe in God, but until you accept Christ, you're going to stay lost. Okay? And that's the choice today. Do you believe in God or do you believe God? The cross means you believe in God. <laughs> Folks, the empty tomb means you believe God. Do you believe God today? Danny, if you and Jacob could come and give us a song. <laughs> Folks, again, we don't know your hearts this morning, but if you have a need, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, then we'd ask you to come. So if everybody'd stand.
page 12. I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God disclosed. tonight at six o'clock so all of you that can please come back i know some of you go say listen doug i already put in two hours listening to you <laughs> this morning do i gotta come back <laughs> folks come back for an hour okay that's how long he hung on the cross mike <laughs> said that at the sixth hour they they crucified him and at the <coughs> night that the sky darkened so folks if he can hang for three hours all right you can listen to Doug for three hours. It won't be the same thing as this morning. Like we say, if it is, then either I did it wrong or you all wasn't listening. So come back this evening if you can at 6 o'clock. Uh, Wednesday night, prayer meeting, children's church and youth group at 7. Any other announcements? So, well, so the annual business meeting will be May 1st. That's the first Monday in May. Uh, I believe Bill set out some nomination forms up here. Uh, folks, if you have a question about who's eligible to vote or who's eligible to run, those are posted on the back on the bulletin board. Uh, if you have a further question, come see me or come see one of the business committee. Uh, again, be prayerful about that. We have some spots that need filled. So uh, make sure whoever you nominate is qualified, make sure you talk to them, and make sure they're willing. Okay, it ain't like Secret Santa. You put somebody's name in the hat, okay? It's a little more serious. So. 
But again, those forms are up here if anybody needs one. Uh, again, appreciate, I'll say once more, all of you that uh, contributed for the Easter baskets. They handed out 250 in like an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, folks, we appreciate that. Appreciate a lot of these young ones up here come and help hold up signs and uh, get the baskets and stuff ready. So. Any other announcements? All right. Go home, get you something to eat, get you a nap. Come back if you can this evening at 6 o'clock. All right, nothing else. Mike, dismiss if you would.